fantasy Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Mercury is an element found in the Earth, normally in rocks. Mercury is released to the environment through natural and anthropogenic processes, including weathering of rocks, volcanic eruptions, forest fires, gold mining, spillage and burning of hazardous waste, and hospital incineration, crematoriums, and coal burning. It is estimated that 70% of environmental mercury is released due to human activities. Mercury is available naturally in four different types, methyl mercury, ethyl mercury, metallic mercury, and inorganic mercury compounds. Metallic mercury is liquid at room temperature and is very dense. It is primarily absorbed in the lungs in gaseous form. It can cross the blood-brain barrier, making it toxic to the central nervous system. Children younger than five are especially sensitive to metallic mercury because their central nervous systems are still developing. Methyl mercury is formed through the interaction with anaerobic bacteria. Ethyl mercury is a blanket term used to describe organic mercury compounds and is not known to bioaccumulate significantly due to its rapid excretion from the body. Inorganic mercury compounds such as mercuric chloride are found in many household and medical products. Inorganic mercury compounds are found in items such as batteries, topical disinfectants, skin lightening creams, and other creams. They are not prone to bioaccumulation. Mercury pollution comes from natural and human sources, including forest fires, coal burning, crematoriums, hospital waste incineration, and burning of hazardous materials. This graph is of the total global mercury emissions by country. China, India, and Europe without Russia are the top three contributors to mercury pollution. This graph shows the deposition of mercury from other countries into Canada. The top three places the mercury deposited in Canada comes from are China, the USA, and Europe without Russia. This proves that mercury emissions are a global problem. Since the 1970s, Canada has been reducing its emissions by up to 90%. However, the deposition of mercury is now 95% from other countries. This graph shows how Canada has decreased her emissions over time. It is quite a dramatic change. Once mercury is released from natural or anthropogenic sources, it circulates through the atmosphere in the hydrological cycle. Anthropogenic sources of mercury now account for the majority of mercury emissions, which means much more mercury is circulating in the environment. This mercury can stay suspended in the atmosphere and then precipitate out, finding its way into rivers, lakes, or oceans. Once it enters the water system, it settles out of the water column and comes into contact with anaerobic bacteria. This bacteria takes the inorganic mercury and metabolizes it, resulting in methyl mercury, which can then be resuspended back in the water column. Once methyl mercury is present in the aquatic system, it starts to bioaccumulate and biomagnify in the food web. It is because of this process that human consumption of fish can't be unlimited especially consumption of top predatory fish species. Methyl mercury starts to accumulate in the primary producers like phytoplankton. It then travels up the food chain becoming more concentrated at each trophic level. Top predatory species like shark, pike, and halibut have high concentrations of methyl mercury. Also predatory mammals and bird species suffer from high methyl mercury concentrations from eating fish. The grasshopper effect occurs when mercury is emitted into the atmosphere from industries in southern latitudes and is precipitated out with rain or snow in northern areas. Some people are more sensitive to mercury poisoning than others, including children and fetuses whose central nervous systems are still developing. Populations that consume a lot of fish are more at risk for higher biomagnification than other populations. This could mean that coastal populations and perhaps certain ethnic groups who eat a lot of seafood are more at risk than groups who eat more red meat and poultry. However, mercury contaminants are found in everyday products like fluorescent light bulbs, thermometers, and dental amalgams, which means that anyone using these products is at risk for mercury contamination. Distribution of mercury throughout the body depends on the type of mercury that the individual is exposed to and at what concentration and exposure time. Organic types are more toxic because they accumulate in lipids and are able to move more readily in the body, including across the blood-brain barrier. Acute poisonings usually occur due to the inhalation of large amounts of vaporous mercury, with the lungs being the major target. This can lead to acute bronchitis, bronchiolitis, and pneumonia. Chronic poisonings target the central nervous systems. Symptoms include weakness, headaches, limb pain, and inflammation of the mucous membrane. 
Mercury can affect enzymes, cofactors, and hormones through its ability to bind to thiol residues on proteins. A key enzyme it affects is superoxide dismutase, which is implicated in such diseases as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, and Down syndrome. Symptoms in the central nervous system include decreased manual dexterity, muscle fatigue, loss in muscle strength, disrupted attention, impairments in the fun motor function, and verbal memory. Tiredness, finger tremors, impaired behavior on neurological tests, and abnormal EEG results. The highest concentrations of mercury are found in the kidneys. Mercury binds to thiol, which leads to apoptosis and subsequent kidney damage. High levels of mercury in mothers can lead to infertility or loss of pregnancy. Women with high levels of methylmercury have increased risk of menstrual disorders, while men have increased risk of infertility. Once mercury enters the cardiovascular system, it oxidizes red blood cells. In adults, mercury exposure can induce hypertension and atherosclerosis. In children, it can cause cardiovascular development abnormalities and abnormal blood pressure levels. Mercury is a teratogen and a carcinogen. As a teratogen, it can cause congenital disorders, and as a carcinogen, it can cause tumors. Mercury causes oxidative stress, leading to free radical formation and subsequent cell damage. Mercury also affects microtubule function, interfering with mitosis and meiosis. It also interferes with DNA repair mechanisms. Fish-eating birds and mammals accumulate more methylmercury. It has been found in eagles, otters, and bears. This exposure can induce reduced fertility, slower growth and development, abnormal behavior, and death. In the city of Minamata, Japan, methylmercury was dumped directly into the water system. Through the production of acetaldehyde by the Shiso Corporation, the resulting wastewater was contaminated with extremely high levels of methylmercury. This led to the contamination of the shellfish and fish populations residing in the local bay and poisoned the local populace. Extremely high levels of methylmercury began bioaccumulating in people who consumed food from the bay. This led to loss of fine motor skills, blurred vision, loss of balance, inability to speak properly, and eventually convulsions, comas, and death. It took many decades and another similar contamination disaster to produce strict laws on mercury pollution in Japan and provide compensation for those affected by this disease. Richard Gelfon, CEO of IMAX, suffered mercury poisoning from a diet consisting mainly of fish twice daily. In general, people don't have to worry about fish consumption if it's only eaten a few times a week. Also, shellfish and fish low on the food chain like salmon or pollock generally have very low concentrations of mercury. In this case, however, he was eating sushi, which usually contained fish higher up in the food web like tuna, halibut, or swordfish. With prolonged consumption of methylmercury, he began to experience damage to his nervous system. Symptoms like loss of balance, numbness, and blurred vision. After seeing many specialists, a neurologist finally diagnosed him with mercury poisoning. Health Canada recommends decreased intake of predatory fish due to elevated methylmercury levels. They advise the general public only have 150 grams of these fish per week. Women who are or may become pregnant or who are breastfeeding should limit themselves to 150 grams of this fish per month. Children ages 5 to 11 should only have 125 grams of these fish per month, and children less than five should only have 75 grams of these fish per month. The first step in treatment for mercury poisoning is to reduce or avoid exposure to the source. Treatment can also involve chelating agents such as cysteine, calcium EDTA, dimercaprol, and penicillamine. Reducing exposure includes adhering to consumption guidelines for fish. Another important step is to reduce mercury emissions. This involves reducing its use in industrial processes and manufacturing like smelting, concrete production, and iron and steel production. We also need to reduce its prevalence and concentrations in products such as electronics, medical instruments, and vaccine preservatives like thimerosal. We can also find a replacement for coal in the production of energy, or at least use coal that contains low levels of mercury. However, we have already made progress in decreasing air and water emissions so we could continue on our current trajectory. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the bandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Galileo Pegaro. Oh, 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 I'm just a poor boy and nobody loves me. 